Hello wonderful human beings, today I am going to review The Candle and the Flame by Nafisa Asad. This is an Asian inspired fantasy set along the Silk Road, which was a trading route, I believe. It is set in the city of Noor, and the city of Noor is a wonderful place because it is just a mix of so many different people. They have all different religious and ethnicity backgrounds and they're all just living together and they have a bunch of different languages languages and I just I could feel the city being alive through the writing here. It follows Fatima. She finds out that she has a fire of a djinn and she is human so that is odd. She was also the one of three survivors of a massacre eight years ago I believe Will the whole city was basically slaughtered except these three people and then after that people have come to the city and inhabited there because of this slaughter there was a tribe of djinns that were evil and created chaos the humans had to call in aid from the another djinn tribe because they helped them under this war against the evil tribe. They now also control half the city and half of other cities throughout the world in this book. The nice tribe of the Dijins is named Ifrit, by the way, and when a really important Ifrit dies, Fatima's life changes in which she could have never imagined. She finds out for one thing about her power and other things and the one who she's dealing with in all this. He's named Sufikar. He is the emir of the city, the North City, which means he's sort of the leader of the Ifridijin that lives there. Fatima is also a Muslim girl and I assume the girl on this cover, which is by the way stunning. I have an arc of this which was sent to me by my friend Justine in the States. Again, I was so lucky and it was one of my anticipated releases. This is out on the 14th of May, so just a few days from now. What to say about this book? First of all, it was freaking awesome. I love the world, I love the city, and I love the writing especially. It was so lush and real. It felt like every single thing that happened just came alive on the page. Just the first sentence in the whole book drew me in and I wanted to read it to you because it's it was just instantly something that I enjoyed. The desert sings of loss, always loss, and if you stand quiet with your eyes closed, it will grieve you too. Wow, what a fun sentence. I loved getting to know Fatima. It changes quite a lot throughout the novel because of things that happen to her and are revealed to her. She also has a sister, Sun Aina, who struggles with the changes in Fatima, but they have a really nice dynamic. We don't only follow Fatima in this novel, we also follow Sulkifar's perspective sometimes, and also the perspective of uh, Fatima's sister, also the perspective of Bavia, who is the princess, the human princess, in the city, uh, and we just see them all grow and realize things. I love the world. It was so well built up. I even like the romance was okay for me. It was a bit insta lovey, but it was sort of fine. I loved how they were together and I just, I loved Fatima and her stubbornness and her fire. I expected to like this, but I didn't expect to enjoy it as much as I did. It's definitely a different kind of fantasy that I'm used to reading and I just love that everything it gave and how it felt like something that really stood out to me, that not just a fantasy, that it just blends into all the other fantasies. What that made it stand out that much is, as I said again, the writing because it was just really that good and I can't believe that this is the debut novel of the author. I don't even like people on covers, but I like this cover. Why? It was brutal as well. It doesn't shed away from blood and killing and there's also like a mystery and backstabbing and people thinking they know better and acting super stupid. There is like all the things going on in the city. I don't want to go too much into detail because it is like an experience you have to have for yourself. I feel like this is not getting the attention it should be getting. Like I see it around but I don't see it around enough and it 
should be seen around more because seriously I am just so pleased by this and I find myself thinking about this and I'm just like that was a really good book a really enjoyable book but really don't sleep on this it's such a nice and diverse read and there are still lots of food in it so you will be hungry and I want to eat when I think about it actually if you think this sounds interesting to you then you should definitely pick it up it has so many great aspects and I love to just ease into this story seriously. I always feel like I am um, I can't express myself well enough in my reviews and I'm sorry but I think I got overall my opinions on this. I give it a book like 4.25 to 5 stars. Giving a book 5 stars for me is apparently really really hard but it's definitely one book that I enjoyed a lot this year and I think I will remember it for quite a long while. I don't know if it's a series, it doesn't stay on Goodreads and I want more but it also ends-ish so it's not like if you don't want to commit to a series it's fine because it does have an ending and I'm fine with that but I would seriously want more. I have seen the author's capabilities in this, I know that she can expand on this world, I have full belief in her to write more in this or in anything else when she does. Well, that was it, I think. Go and pick up The Candle and the Flame, which is released on the 14th of May, and you will see me soon in a new video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!